Hi, sweetie. You've broken part of your spinal column. You need to be calm. We're about to stabilize. Moving patient to R5. We have internal bleeding in the thorax region. Check BP. We need to reduce bleeding stat. We're taking good care of you. I don't want you to stress. However, it looks like you've broken part of your backbone and has ruptured your cord. We have a spinal injury. We need a specialist. Stop. Good evening, my name is Elroy Hill and Mariam, and today we'll be discussing the topic of spinal nerve cell regeneration. Spinal damage affects millions of people across the United States. It's left people with impaired mobility, cardio, and respiratory problems that could eventually lead to death. However, today we'll be discussing what scientists are doing to reverse that or even improve it. We'll be looking into molecular aspects of spinal damage and regeneration. Please stay tuned. Hi, Dr. Neuron. Thank you for being here with us today. So I want to start off with a question. How does spinal damage affect people around the world? You know, actually 250,000 people in the United States are currently living with some form of spinal injury. And 12,000 get injured every single year in the United States. And surprisingly enough, almost 37% of those injuries are ca caused by car accidents. However, really anything can cause spinal damage, from falling down the stairs, from playing soccer and falling, really anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why has spinal damage been such a huge issue? Why can't scientists be able to reverse it or fix it, per se? Well, that's actually a really interesting question. So, Due to the many factors that play a role in discontinuing regeneration of spinal nerves, scientists have not really been able to figure out why exactly molecularly spinal nerves do not regenerate, but right now there are so many clinical trials and research that's being done in order to understand the process. Okay, so can you explain the idea of spinal nerve cell regeneration and why it's such a difficult process? So this is the spinal cord and this is the brain and these two things are part of what we call the central nervous system and they are in charge of controlling communication between the brain specifically to the body. So what happens is you get information from your body that goes to the spine and the spine sends it to the brain and then the brain interprets it and sends out signals from the spinal cord that go in throughout the whole body. And this happens because of neurons. There are three types of primary neurons inside the nervous system. There are motor neurons, sensory neurons, and inner neurons. And what they do is basically they, they're able to send out the information from the brain to the body. They communicate amongst each other using their organelles called axons and dendrites, and the axons of neurons are used to send neurotransmitters to signal impulses to other cells, which are then received and interpreted by dendrites in another cell. These connections are known as synapses and occur throughout the nervous system. They're basically what send c communication from one part of the body to another. And this is the diagram of a healthy neuron in the human body. Due to the intricacy of the neuron and in general the central nervous system, when trauma occurs, many processes occur in order to protect your spine and the rest of your body in general. Furthermore, a series of post-trauma reactions, both physical and chemical, take place to stabilize the nerves near the site of injury. And this adds to the loss of nerves and also adds to the factors that prevent nerves from naturally regenerating. When trauma occurs, blood vessels are damaged, which triggers the immune system, bringing swelling to the area of impact, thus preventing neuronal ex extension. And also a lot of neurotransmitters are released, causing overstimulation of the nerves and killing or damaging them. Uh, additionally, neurons in the central nervous system are amniotic, meaning that once they carry out their functions, they lose all ability to divide and hence they die. Another factor is uh, Glial scar tissue forms a barrier that prevents axon from extending and this obviously causes the lack of communication from one neuron to another, which means no communication from one part of the body to another, basically applying to all the factors that prevent nerve cell regeneration.
So we want to know, what, what are you guys doing right now? What are scientists doing to combat these reactions and produce more of these complex cells? There are countless different approaches towards regenerating and reviving spinal nerve cells. Scientists have investigated methods from using cell replacement, which is the idea of taking different types of cells from one part of the body and moving it to another part and then coaxing, it to, coaxing them to act like neurons. Uh, additionally, scientists are also observing the impact of removing growth inhibitors like glial cells and they're also looking at using cellular bridging in addition to adding neurotrophic factors which are environments where neurons are permitted and nourished to grow. Uh, and lastly, scientists are experimenting with altering immune system responses such as reducing swelling that cuts off neurons. I want to share with you one clinical trial that's tested the possibility of transforming stem cells into neurons, or at least to act like one. Stem cells are cells in an organism that have the ability to transform, which is called to differentiate into other cells and can constantly divide and replenish. In 2013 and 2014, Utah Southwestern Medical Center was able mm -hmm. to generate glial cells, which form scar tissue around neurons with stem-like features. Uh, they were able to produce central nervous system nerve cells by forcing DNA that make a dull glial transition into having stem like features that can further be matured into neurons. And I will actually show you that process right now. What scientists did was target glial cells that form scar tissue near the site of injury. They added a gene called SOX2, which is beneficial in developing stem like features. This created neuroblasts, which were embryonic cells that nerve fibers originate from. Then they turned off invasive genetic pathways, which created even more neuroblasts. Lastly, the, with the introduction of specifically two genetic neurotrophic factors, they created a nourishing environment that permitted the complete maturation of neuroblasts into neurons. Your x-rays have shown that your injury is incomplete. Luckily, you'll be able to function in a couple of months. I'm sorry to inform you, it looks like you have sustained a complete level A injury. You won't be feeling anything below your C1 vertebrae, which means you'll be experiencing complete paralysis. Fortunately, you have a grade B injury, and you should be able to regain almost complete mobility, but it will take some time in your terms of growth. As you've seen, spinal nerve cell regeneration still continues to be a mystery to scientists. Spinal cord injuries lead to neural network damage that can permanently impair motor and sensory functions. It's created a molecular jigsaw that scientists continue to attempt to solve. But if regeneration of spinal nerve cells is eventually successful in humans, biological sciences will forever be changed. With successful regeneration, people could regain mobility and respiratory and cardio problems could massively be reduced. Overall, the reproduction of spinal nerve cell regeneration could change the life of millions of people around the world.